Please put your hands together and give a warm Southern Arkansas welcome. Richard Hassel. In this day and age for a reason. 
God has placed you here today for a purpose. My friends, Thomas Jefferson said, love thy neighbor as yourself, but love your country more than yourself. What I can do for my country and what you can do for your country could be radically different or it could be the same thing. My point is to ask you today to get off your butts and to get out there and do something for the future of our country. I'm here today advocating for conservative principles because I feel this is why God has placed me on this earth, to fight for my country and everything I believe in. But my friends, this journey of mine, it started a long time ago. When I was 10 years old, as I've been saying, God put a little political bug in my heart. Since then, as Ms. Rankin said, I was a teenager, I was the president of the teenage Republicans. I've worked on countless campaigns, trying to get the best, trying my best to get conservative candidates elected to every level of government. But I believe the most important thing we have been able to accomplish up in Baxter County is reviving the American spirit in a community through the Ozark Tea Party, showing each other that we are not alone in our beliefs, that we still believe in God, we still believe in the principles of our founding, a small and limited government, low taxes, honesty, integrity, and hard work, that the only thing the government should be in the business of doing is freedom to secure our God-given rights of life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. And through that revival uh, in our community, we have produced candidates who have won elections, and we have thrown out a heck of a lot of bad politicians. And Baxter County is a better place because of it. And I am so proud to be one of those candidates that won. But when I was asked to run, you know, I didn't just jump right into it. I went and I talked to my family. And you have to understand the family I come from. When we see a chance to stand up for the right, to stand up for what we believe in, we run at that chance. So with the full support of my rather large homeschool Catholic family, I got into the race. And predictably, the good old boy system in Baxter County got to work against me. I had just one or two members of uh, the older GOP guys tell me that I shouldn't run. And then uh, the biggest effect that had on me was this one guy called me up. And uh, not a member of the GOP, I'm going to say that, but he called me up. And he told me that if I didn't drop out of the race today, he was going to punch holes in the bottom of paint cans and leave them on top of my car while I was at work. <laughs> well, <laughs> once again, these people didn't understand the family that I come from. When there's a challenge in front of us, we don't go and cower in the corner. We pray for guidance from the Heavenly Father, and we run straight at it. Let me put it this way. My mama didn't raise no women. So we got out there, and we raised over $5,000, 60% of which was donations under $50, which I'm very proud of. We walked the streets and met the voters. We put up billboards and swamped the airways of radio ads. And when election day came, the people of Baxter County spoke, and the people put the good old boy system in Baxter County in the trash bin of history. There's a three to one margin of victory that I found out later made history because someone told me, and I, I believe the right from research I've been able to do that, uh, being 19 years old, being elected at 19, was the youngest elected official in the history of our state. But with that being said, I want you to understand that this victory was not about me. It could have been my brother. It could have been Joe Blow down the street. This election was a chance for the people of Baxter County to say, we are done with good old boy politics. We want integrity. We want transparency. We want somebody who will be honest in office and actually tell us the truth. We want somebody who will work for the future of our country. Somebody who gives us hope, not in that person, but in ourselves and in the country we live in. And that message, the message I ran on, is a message we need to take throughout the state of Arkansas. You see, that message of honesty, transparency, and hard work strikes at the core of liberalism. Having pride in your country strikes at the foundation of progressive liberalism. In fact, if you think about it, our history strikes at the heart of who I like to call our domestic enemies. Some might call them Democrats. <laughs> President of me excluded <laughs> And how many of us know the history of the Statue of Liberty? You know, uh, I used to think I knew it, but then a man named Martin Beck, you might know him, uh, he really taught me the true story of the Statue of Liberty. Most Americans think the French just gave us it because we're nice guys. But think about that. 
we all know the French aren't really that nice. <laughs> they, they gave it to us to mock the old European system. And if you know your history, you know about the process of Rhodes. The ancient Greeks built it. It was a giant statue that stood astride over the harbor, holding its lamp like this. The Colossus of Rhodes was the idea behind the Statue of Liberty. The Colossus of Rhodes kind of stood arched back like this, like, oh yeah, look at me. But the Statue of Liberty was moving forward like this. Her feet were walking and she was holding her torch in front of her with the light penetrating the darkness. And if you look at her feet, there are broken chains around her feet while she's moving forward, saying that the laws of our land will set you free. Now the part we always get wrong, what we have taught our kids for a generation is that you read the poem of the Statue of Liberty like this. Give me your tired, your poor, your huddled masses yearning to breathe free, the wretched refuse of your teeming shore. Send these the homeless, tempest tossed to me. I lift my lamp beside the golden door. And if you read it like that, you really think about it. What are we, the Salvation Army? It doesn't make sense. Is the Statue of Liberty saying to Europe, hey, you guys, you're never going to make it over there with all that riffraff? No, they were mocking that system. That's not what the Statue of Liberty means. That's not what the intent was. Remember, the Statue of Liberty was mocking the old system of Europe. The Statue of Liberty was used to ignite liberty in the heart of the French. Look at America. Look what they're doing. The poem, entitled The New Colossus, was meant to read like this. Not like the brazen giant of Greek fame with conquering limbs astride from land to land. Here, at our sea-washed sunset gates, shall stand a mighty woman with a torch whose flame is imprisoned lightning, and her name, Mother of Exiles. From her beaconed hand glows worldwide welcome. Her mild eyes command the air-bridged harbors that twin cities frame. Keep ancient lands your story pump, cries she with silent lips. Give me, give me your tired, your poor, your huddled masses yearning to breathe free, the wretched refuse of your teeming shore. Send these, the homeless, tempest-tossed to me. I lift, I lift my hand beside the golden door. That is the message. Even the people that you reject in Europe can make it here. They will give it all to be successful here. You can make it here in America. That's the message of the Statue of Liberty. And that's the idea that my generation has lost. So we need to figure out how do we get America to realize this again. How do we ignite freedom and liberty into the hearts of our own citizens? Well, last week at church, we sang a song. You may have heard of it. The name of it is On Eagle's Wings. And if I was a mean person, I would ask that Ben Rankin to come up here and sing it. <laughs> but <laughs> while I was singing it, <laughs> while I was singing it, um, it just popped in my head that this is the answer. This is how we fix our nation. This is how we become that shining city on a hill once again. The words go like this. You who dwell in the shelter of the Lord, who abide in his shadow for life, say to the Lord, my refuge, my rock in whom I trust, and he will raise you up on eagle's wings, bear you on the breath of dawn, make you to shine like the sun, and hold you in the palm of his hand. You need not fear the terror of the night, nor the arrows that fly by day. Under his wings, your refuge, his faithfulness, your shield. For to his angels, he's given a command to guard you in all of your ways. Upon their hands, they will bear you up, lest you dash your foot against a stone. My friends, if we remember who we are, if we remember that we are one nation under God, and we work to inspire others to join us, God will raise us up on eagle's wings. He will bear us on the breath of dawn and make our nation shine like the sun once more. Thank you.